Well, good evening, good evening, and welcome to this service of evening prayer. My name is Reverend David Lucas, and I'm the curate at St. Michael's in Hyington, St. Matthew and Luke in Darlington, and St. Andrew's in Bolham. A very warm welcome to you if you're joining us for the first time tonight. What we're going to do is we're going to have a short service of evening prayer based on the Book of Common Prayer in this season of Advent, this fourth Sunday of Advent. And of course, our reflections today will be upon the readings assigned for this morning. So at this time, I invite you to adopt a posture of prayer. Find for yourself that position that you come easily to uh, when you're talking to the Lord. Today is also known as Gaudate Sunday, Gaudate being the Latin for joy, when the angel Gabriel told Mary that a special child would be born to her. She was filled with joy. She sang a song that began with the words, My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Just as the birth of Jesus gave great joy to his mother, so the presence in his presence in the world gave great joy to those who had none before. He healed them and gave them hope and peace when they believed in him. So from hope, peace, and love grows joy. So joy is like a light shining in a dark place. As we look today upon the light of Christ, let us remember this. So let us pray. Thank you, God, for the joy that you give us. We ask that as we wait for all of your promises to come true, and for Christ to come again, that you would remain present with us. Help us today and every day to worship you and to hear your word, and to do your will by sharing your joy with each other. We ask it in the name of the one who was born to us in Bethlehem. Amen. So, beloved, we're come together in the presence of Almighty God and of the whole company of heaven to offer unto him through our Lord Jesus Christ our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to make confession of our sins, to pray as well for others as for ourselves, that we may know more truly the greatness of God's love and show forth in our lives the fruits of his grace, and to ask on behalf of all men such things as their well-being doth require. Wherefore, let us sit or kneel in silence, and remember God's presence with us now. Together we pray. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Grant, we beseech thee, merciful Lord, to thy faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins, and serve thee with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. So I invite you to join me in the words of the Magnificat, joining me on the even verses. My soul doth magnify the Lord and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, 
and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath helped his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers Abraham and his seed for ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Now for our first reading. Our first reading comes from Paul's epistle to the Romans, beginning at chapter 1. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God, the gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures regarding his son, who, as to his human nature, was a descendant of David, and who through the spirit of holiness was declared with power to be the Son of God. By his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him and for his name's sake we received his grace and apostleship to call a people from among the Gentiles to the obedience that comes from faith. And you also are among those who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew, chapter 1. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took Mary home to his, as his wife. And he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Oh, well, my friends, can I invite you to pray with me? Lord Jesus, I pray for the people of this world, the people you love so much that you came to be born of a virgin and dwell among us. I pray that you would speak to this world afresh, that you would speak to each of us this evening, that you would build our faith to trust you more, to know and believe ourselves to be your beloved children, that we all may share this good news with the world in such pain. And may I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen people. At Christmas time and throughout the year, here in church or in these services or wherever it may be, we speak about big things, grand things, life-changing things. And in so doing, we actually come to see that regular, ordinary, and humble things of the world can end up becoming extraordinary in God. The type of things that St. Paul wrote about in the Roman, to the Roman church in the passage I just read from moments ago, the gospel of God, or the good news of God that was promised beforehand. God, who is before all time, enters into time on our behalf. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, born into the world to save sinners, was the one promised beforehand. Now there's much that can be said, of course, ought to be said and will be said, but what particularly strikes me about this for today is that God has chosen people regular, ordinary people like you and me, to bring about and share this good news with the world. Jesus' disciples, the apostles, regular, ordinary people, got caught up into something incredible. And through their witness to what God has done, God has and continues to change the world for the better. By the witness of those who came before us, we, each of us, are invited into something amazing. Remember, at one point in Jesus' life, he asked the disciples, who do people say that I am? And then afterwards turned to his disciples and asked them, who do you say that I am? 
My friends, this is the most important question I think we can ever come to answer. Who is Jesus? Our answer to this question hangs the ultimate fate of each and every one of our lives and the well-being of the entire world. People, of course, have come up with all sorts of answers to this question through the ages, ranging from a really great guy to a wonderful teacher to a powerful prophet. Others have dismissed him as a charlatan, someone possessed by the devil, and my favorite nowadays is a mythical creature or figment of our imaginations. Well, the gospel writers, who are regular, ordinary people just like us, have chosen to address this very question right at the beginning of their gospel accounts, in order that for us, we can also know and answer this question for ourselves. Our gospel reading today from St. Matthew is all about the origin of Jesus telling us right from the beginning who Jesus really is. There is no ambiguity. We read, His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, and before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Mary, my friends, is a new beginning. Her child does not originate from any man, but as a new creation, conceived through the Holy Spirit. Jesus is here set apart from every other human being that has ever been born, his origin is not ordinary. He is from God through the Holy Spirit. Now, it reads, Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. Joseph, a just man, faithful to the law, doesn't want to cause offense to God by retaining his relationship with an adulteress as he perceives her. He understandably, or I suppose misunderstandably, chooses to break off their marriage, but he does so kindly. He does so with love. He does not want to give Mary up to public shame. He wishes her well, even in the hour of his own great disappointment. We see in Joseph a man of exceptional self-restraint, seemingly freed from the tyrannical passion of jealousy, which is as cruel as the grave. But kindness is a virtue all too rare these days, and often overlooked in our culture as a weakness. Cherish it when you see it. It goes on to read, But after Joseph had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Belief, trust, faith talk about these things often here, don't we? My friends, whereas the angel came to Mary, he merely appears to Joseph in a dream, admittedly a dream that is real and reveals what is real. But this gives us another wonderful glimpse into the life and character of this man, Saint Joseph. He is someone who abides by God's law, as we have seen, as well as someone who is kind and loving, as we have seen. And thus, we see in him someone who is sensitive to God and his, and his ways, someone who is inwardly watchful for the divine. In Joseph's faithfulness, he has cultivated the capacity to receive from God, to hear the voice of his messenger. Yet the message conveyed to Joseph is overwhelmingly overwhelming, and it demands extraordinary courage and faith. Can it be that God has really spoken? That what Joseph was told in the dream was truth? A truth so far surpassing anything he could have asked or foreseen. Is God really going to be born of Mary? I mean, my goodness, what strange things the dreamed angel spoke of, surpassing all human reasoning and all laws of nature. How can this be? A child's name to be Jesus, meaning literally God saves? Is God really coming to save? Will he who is king of kings be born to a peasant girl and brought up by a carpenter? How can this be? Joseph, a regular, ordinary person like every other, his answer to this question, or these questions, changes the course of his life for the benefit of the whole world. Thank goodness he had the capacity to discern the divine reality behind his questions. His answer, bravely, is a firm yes to God. He will receive God's message. He will believe. He will trust. He will have faith. He will be caught up into this extraordinary and incredible new reality. And for the remainder of his life, he will serve God by loving his wife and taking care of this miracle child, Jesus. Now, to contrast this with my own story, 
If you've been here before, you may have heard it, or at least pieces of it here and there. There was a time of when I, of course, didn't believe in God, and I thought all this stuff about Jesus and the cross was a load of nonsense. I used to have arguments with people about how stupid Christianity was, and totally buying into the narrative that religion is the cause of all the world's evil. Well, I was having one of these discussions, one of these arguments with my girlfriend at the time, who I later married, and was explaining to her uh, so well, of course, how, uh, how it was that Christianity was so stupid, why it was so dumb. And in the very midst of being able to uh, argue this, Hannah, my wife, uh, just let me talk it out. And, um, and somehow or another, I opened myself up to the possibility that it may have been true. Uh, that what I was arguing against was indeed the case. And I realized in that moment that actually it was true, that in that moment God came and met me, and I knew with all of my being that it was true, that God was real, that what was spoken of his love, death, his resurrection, all of it was true, that what I had been arguing against was indeed the case. And I kept on saying to Hannah, do you know what this means? Do you know what this means? But as I started to think about what this means, goodness, I thought, I need to change my life. My parents, my family, my friends, they need to change their lives. This is so big and so huge, and it actually scared me. It scared me, and I ended up pushing it down and denying it for about two years. Contrast that with the character of Joseph, who in his discernment, in his wisdom, this ordinary man but faithful to God, was able to understand and, and discern in his own by, his, by the Spirit of God. My friends, for us and the world today, those who believe in Jesus' incredible origin, who, like Joseph and Mary and the apostles and the countless millions through the centuries, trust that he is of God, we enter through faith into Jesus' unique origin himself. And we receive this origin as our own. In and of ourselves, all believers are Initially, of course, born of blood and the will of man, as it says in John's Gospel. But through faith, God gives us new birth. Through faith, we also enter into the origin of Jesus Christ, which now becomes our own origin. When we believe that Jesus Christ really is the Son of God, not just some great guy, a wonderful teacher, a mighty prophet, but truly God of God, we ourselves are caught up into the incredible, into the extraordinary, as the life of God is born in us. So here we are then, at the tail end of this season of Advent, anticipating the great feast of Christmas coming this coming week, the celebration of Jesus' first coming. We recall these stories of his birth not just to remember some interesting historical figure from long ago or some quaint nostalgic story that used to cause us wonder when we were children. Oh no, it's the other way around. We tell and retell these stories year after year because they are an invitation to us an invitation to once again enter into relationship with the Lord of all who was born in a barn. Invitation to meet him in relationship here and now. To recall our wandering hearts to him who is meant to be born as the Lord in our own hearts. We tell and retell these stories because for us, on this side of his birth, life, death, resurrection, and ascension, we know that we are partakers in this great story ourselves that we now are given capacity to become participants of the heavenly kingdom that Jesus ushers in. We look forward to the culmination of all of this story, of all of time, of all of God's action throughout history, striving towards an end where all of creation might call him Emmanuel, God with us. So at this time, I would invite you to pray with me. Holy Spirit, Lord and giver of life, you overshadowed Mary, that she might be the mother of Jesus, our Savior. So work silently in our hearts to form within us the fullness of his redeemed and redeeming humanity. Give to each of us his loving heart, to burn with love for God and love for our neighbor. Give to us a share of his joy and of his sorrow, his weakness and his strength, his labor for the world's salvation. May the Holy Spirit overshadow us, that Christ may be formed in each of us, that we may live in union of heart and will with Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So in response to the scriptures, response to perhaps what you were meditating on as I spoke, 
I invite you to respond to God with the words of the Song of Simeon, the Nunc Dimittis. Say with me, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. So together we proclaim. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the King, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. The Collect set for today, this fourth Sunday of Advent. God, our Redeemer, who prepared the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of your Son, grant that as she looked for his coming as our Savior, so we may, we may be ready to greet him when he comes again as our Judge, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. My brothers and sisters, at the bidding, come Lord Jesus, would you please respond? Come, O come, Emmanuel. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, O come, Emmanuel. Holy Jesus, by being born one of us and lying humbly in a manger, you show how much God loves the world. Let the light of your love always shine in our hearts until we reach our home in heaven and see you on your throne of glory. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, O come, Emmanuel. Lord Jesus Christ, your birth at Bethlehem draws us to kneel in wonder at heaven touching earth. Accept our heartfelt praise as we worship you, our Saviour and our eternal God. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, O come, Emmanuel. Loving Jesus, you were born in a stable, but worshipped by the angels. Be with all of those who are lonely, and with all who feel distant from celebrations, be for us a living hope that lighten our hearts. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, O come, Emmanuel. Jesus, as you healed the sick, bring healing to those in our families who are ill today. We ask for your compassion, your comfort, your healing. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, O come, Emmanuel. Christ born for us, Son of God given for us, help us to know you, to worship, and to serve you. We ask you to share our lives, 
to hear our prayers, that all glory might be for you to you forever and ever, and peace and goodwill towards men. We pray for those throughout the world where there is no peace, where there is only pain, where there is only suffering, where there is such brokenness. We continue to pray for the people in Ukraine and for the people fleeing persecution, people feel, fleeing the violence there. Have mercy, O Lord. Pray for all those families who are grieving at this time. Lord, that you who are the light and the darkness would shine. Bring especially for the families of those four children who have recently passed. For all of those in our neighborhoods and our own families who are grieving, ourselves as we grieve. Lord, that you would meet us in our pain. And we ask that you would give to us a sense of that hope. That as we grieve, as we are bereaved, O oh Lord, that it would be a darkness that is yet bright. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, O oh come, Emmanuel. A God who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light, bless us and fill us with his peace. Send your Holy Spirit upon your church afresh, that at the good news of your coming, O Lord Christ, that we would proclaim the good news to the world. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, O come, Emmanuel. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Light in our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, by thy great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. My brothers and sisters, may the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the pers perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Mary and Joseph, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. Would you join with me in saying the grace? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. So that concludes our service of evening prayer this night. God bless you this evening. I hope you have a wonderful sleep as best you can. Uh, may you know him in your prayers. May you find him in your dreams. May you have visions. May you know his presence with you as a comfort. God bless you this evening and Merry Christmas.